I see the title, man. Let's get to it. So when it comes to NBA media, one it's of the like biggest anti-Michael Jordan few weeks we have thing or every is a snake, right? Every week. And he requires like the classic example of a snake oil salesman. He'll sell you half truths here, half truths there, and always leave out important details that don't fit his narrative. Now, when it comes to Jordan... I, well, Price, I see a lot of people do that, though. Nick Price is not the only uh, uh, one that does that. I see a lot of people do that, you know. latest argument people, is one of his weaker ones I've seen. As Nick Wright argues Jordan fans ignore his early career and later career when he wasn't winning championships. And even goes one step further, saying Jordan pre-91 is a total loser and nothing without Pippen. So, of course, those arguments Chill. right there are complete straw mans, and nobody in their right mind thinks Jordan only played six years. And I think Jordan's pre-championship years from 85 to 90 are actually vitally important to his overall career and debuffed many myths about him as a player. As 80s Jordan, you could argue as an individual player, force of nature, was the best of all time. As he's an elite scorer, playmaker, and defender. Averaging 35.8 points, I mean, 6.9... I feel like the 90s, I feel like like the early 90s Jordan, I feel like that Jordan was just a tad bit better, you know? In terms of just... Being the the total package and knowing how to win, you know, in in everything he had the uh, perfect combination. I said this in the last reaction or reaction like two days ago. He had the perfect combination of of athleticism, you know, a, a technician, you know, <laughs> the, the the fade away, the post shimmy shots, you know. He had the perfect combination in it between uh, nineteen ninety to about ninety three, in my opinion, you know, from what I've seen so far. Boards, only seven assists. I ain't, ain't watch so much of those. Eighty, yeah, I ain't going on. Maybe shooting. some of the rookie shit, but again, these numbers are out of this world and completely insane. And Jordan, on both ends of the floor, scorer and defender, was the best in the world. As in this stretch, he had fourteen games of forty plus points, three games of fifty plus points, and mm. one game cracking sixty. That is roughly a fifty-game sample size of playoff Jordan before his championships. Jeez. I think it's pretty so Maybe I got to check know. out Mike uh, 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 in the 80s. You checked out a lot of Mike in the um, early 90s. That's why I'm really... Maybe that's why. You know, maybe he's just recency bias. That's the only thing I've seen. You know? I haven't really seen the uh, uh, the playoffs runs where Mike didn't, didn't win a chip. So... The teams he was playing at the lower seat, teams like Boston, Detroit, Cleveland... Those teams defensively routinely in the top five. And I think one of Jordan's <coughs> more underrated years for his championships was actually his first year Matrix. in his rookie season. As Jordan, off the bat from game one, was dominant on both ends of the floor and a really well put together basketball player in all aspects. As an 85, he averaged 28.2 points, the third highest average in the NBA, first in total scoring, 6.5 so boards, 5.9 assists, 2 steals <laughs> on 52% shooting. For his Bulls team, he was a leader in points, rebounds, assists, and steals, being second in block <laughs> behind Jawan Olden, nah. who was a 7 point almost, center. Literally almost led in every uh, statistical category, I guess you could say. You know, that's crazy. That's crazy. And happy Thanksgiving, you know. It's probably going to come out on Thanksgiving Day. So happy Thanksgiving to y'all. I appreciate all y'all. You know, that got me, you know what I'm saying, stalling something. I appreciate this word. You know what I'm saying? I, sorry for the inconsistencies as well. You know, I'm trying to start a few other businesses on the side. So just give me a second. <laughs> well, he barely played second, 15 yeah. minutes. And comparing rookie Jordan to the entire NBA, guys like Magic, Bird, Kareem, guys of that ilk, Jordan coming in off the bat played 82 games tied for the most in the NBA, and in terms of minutes, ranked 4th at 38.3. You could definitely say rookie Michael Jordan was a top 10 player and an NBA superstar from the jump. As looking at who won MVP, that of course was Larry Bird. But many forget Jordan actually finished in the top 3 in the first place votes, only behind Bird and Terry Cummings. And look, when it comes to Nick... Wait, why does it say uh, Magic at... Uh, what's we call it? 
Magic and, and, and Moses Malone at um second and third. Do they get a lot of second place or uh, votes? Is that why? Maybe that's why. I'm not too sure about how the MVP voting works, but the way it sounds. Left behind Bird and Terry Cummings. And look, when it comes to Nick Wright, his overall argument, it is pretty baffling. Because it makes quite literally zero sense from a Jordan fan perspective to ignore this year and many years like this in the 1980s. Once again proving, Nick's overall argument is a massive straw man. And of course, like I said earlier, Larry Bird in 85, he won MVP, one of the greatest seasons of all time. But looking at Yo, other great MVP games, crazy. of course you have 2016 Curry, 2013 LeBron, 2000 Shaq, among many others. When talking about the best MVPs, what's one award that is always brought up? Michael Jordan in 1988, before he won his championships. As looking at 88 Jordan, in terms of two-way impact, being the best scorer, best offensive player, and the best defensive player. I don't know if any player before or since him dominated a single year like Jordan A. Yeah. As he went. Damn. I'm gonna have to, <laughs> Did they make the playoff this year? I'm gonna have to check out that uh that playoff run right there. That's crazy. That's crazy. You know. <laughs> I'm trying to see that. <laughs> I'm trying to see that. And That's what fans crazy. always focus on, of course, 35 is Jordan's 40-point games, 50-point games, and averaging 35 points per game that season. And while that is highly impressive, all-time great stuff, Jordan, the defensive end, was just as great. As in NBA history, Jordan 88 ranked seventh all-time with the most steals in a single season. Mm. In terms of block shots by a guard, nice Jordan shit. 88 had the most ever that hasn't been threatened in the past 25 years. And compared to his peers, ranked first in steals, first in blocks for guards, first in defensive plus minus, and second in defensive win shares. And my favorite stat about 88 Jordan, for a defensive player year winner, he is the only player ever Dude, to average 30 points or even 35 points in a single season. Look, in the past, guys like Kobe, James Harden, T-Mac, even Kevin Durant have put up 32 points, 33, even 35 or 36 points in a single season. But really, none of those guys dominated on both ends of court like 88 Jordan. And for a very quick side note, look at the 88 MVP race. Look at those top 12 guys on that list. Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, top 10 all time, top 5 all yes. time. Another That's definitely steep and stiff competition, man. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna lie. Another top 10 player all time. The NBA back in the late 80s was completely Yeah, loaded. that shit was... That's a fact. Like I was just about Mark to say that. That shit was... Wexler, Nick, what? Stack. Stockton, Isaiah. <laughs> I mean, it goes on and on and on. Jordan being the best offensive player and defensive player in that NBA makes it 10 times more impressive. Now, Jordan's last year in the 80s was 19. Uh, watch that. And some fans are this year from an offensive yeah, perspective yeah. that she better yeah. than 1988. As Jordan averaged 32.5 points, 8 point assists, 8 boards, nearly 3 steals on 54% shooting. Since the NBA's inception, no player outside of Tiny Archibald and Jordan have averaged 30. As Jordan Average 32.5 points, 8 point assists, 8 boards, oh, and yeah. 3 steals on 54% shooting. Since the NBA's inception, no player outside Tiny Archibald and Jordan have averaged 32.5 points or higher. This is the 89 the season. Assists. How is he averaging the 87 season? I missed that. Damn. Hope I missed that. Jordan, who supposedly wasn't a passer. Yeah, we gotta check out the 87 playoffs. Sorry, a lot. 87, 88. Or a great facilitator. And all the talk about Scottie Pippen coming off the bat, being this great player, transformational guy. I mean, an 89 Jordan was still carrying his behind in the NBA playoffs. Whether it be <laughs> the Knicks, the Pistons, or even the Cavaliers. I mean, Jordan at this point, he had the reins of the offense, was the point guard, shooting guard, kind of a combo mix and had the ball virtually 24-7. And for a 19-game sample size, when he strictly played point guard, Jordan put these numbers were simply yeah. mind-blowing. 30.8 points, 
and then 12 assists, 9.6 boards. That's ridiculous, 2.7 steals. I'm just thinking about, 50. like, when you, when, you, when you know, when you know, when you even watch so many videos have that I have been, that I have watched, you know, I know the context now. You know, it's a slower pace. They score less points. He, he's not shooting as many three-pointers. You know, <laughs> these are hard four buckets. You know, I'm pretty sure in 88, they probably could sit in the lane for three seconds still. percent shooting during that stretch jordan Jeez. had 11 triple doubles including seven straight and his team's overall record was 11 and 8. for nick right to argue jordan fans ignore half his career because he didn't win championships is really downright stupid as if nick was actually smart he also would try to ignore these seasons as many of jordan's years in the 80s they debunk numerous myths about his career and his overall game. The overall myth he couldn't carry a roster, with nothing without Pippen, just a score, and not a great passer. If you look at Jordan pre-1991, all those myths and narratives are completely debunked. And again, uh, yeah, bro, it's just about watching the, the film. A lot of people don't like watching the film, and that's the problem. They don't like doing their research, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm <laughs> I'm here though, bro. I ain't oh, yeah, that's the end of this joint, though, y'all. Click on the last joint.